Today's extravaganza is a trip into VHS heaven and VHS hell, I guess you could call it that. Anyway, yeah, this is going to be a how to do VHS copying using what's available on Amazon. And this is it's quite interesting to see. It's not going to take too long, but yeah, see what the problems are. Here we go. This is the machine in question. It's a six head hi-fi stereo. It's a JVC clone under the Brandt label. Excuse the dust, but this is what the back of it looks like. This is because um, it's European. It's got the 75 ohm cable in antenna inputs and you've got the SCART sockets there. And because it's a hi-fi one, it's also got the RCA outputs. So that's video and the left and right stereo as the normal colors. This one is the DigitNow U170 and it's um, it's readily available or it has been from Amazon at about £19. It comes complete with a CD for the software which is a pain in the backside because my laptop doesn't have a CD but I, yeah, it's one of those things. It's supposedly good and um, when you look in the manual it says you know, it's got labels stuck on things there. I don't know what that's covering up. Some sort of type thing there on the thing. anyway let's have a look at it inside so it says there it's got a good list of there it says NTSC 4.43 blah 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 PAL blah 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 including 60 video format input 1 RCA 1 S video and it does all these output resolutions which I haven't found the adjustment for but then you don't really need to because all you do is you just recall it and then you alter it in your post production which is the better way of doing it because if you make the mistake at the beginning, it's a long way to go back. Just, just do it as best you can. So this is what we've got in the box. We've got a adapter, the all-in-one adapter, which is USB. It's got the things on it. We, this is a SCART adapter. Now you can see on the back of the machine we had SCART sockets. So this is what that's for. Uh, it's, it's got um, the correct connections for the various signals and things. And then we've got the lead to connect it, the normal RCA lead. And then, of course, we've got the computer. The computer is very necessary in this. Otherwise, you don't end up with any digits. So that's the computer. Now, connecting it up is fairly simple. You just go with the color codes on there. And you plug the USB into the USB socket. That makes sense there. Uh, I'm not using Super VHS, so I'm not using the SVHS input. Go around the back now and you can just see that uh, I'm not using the SCART either on this occasion because this is a hi-fi one it's got the video and the two audio outputs there so that's nice and simple as far as that's concerned it's when we get onto the software here now this is the one that we got to open up and it's called VHS to DVD 3 and it says it easily converts and it does and it starts off with your webcam which is a bit disconcerting but never mind and uh, the first thing you have to do is go into the video device selector and select the AV to USB 2. Then it's uh, quite easy to click on OK and it should come up with what's coming out of the video device that you're feeding it with. Which in this case I'm feeding it with the um, housekeeping type housekeeping type menu which is fine. But you'll notice it's all in French. This is because it's a French European video recorder. I have here a VHS tape and as you can see it's in perfect condition there is no sign of mould or anything like that and uh, I shall pop that in there and we'll see what this comes up like on here so I'll insert and let's get the start there we go now this is where we've got a slight problem this is uh, as it comes straight off the, the thing you can see there Mr Alan Sugar looking all really right rather smart and very young but um, it's not a particularly good picture and well you know it's this is a problem I found with this thing uh, so I hit the record button and this is the actual output that you can see here uh, the box on the left hand side is what it actually recorded um, it's not doing very well it's all faded out so let's hit stop and try again and uh, yeah, here we go this is the recording there so it's still not doing very well here it's all faded out but uh, let's see what happens if we carry on the next push the stop 
And, uh, well, here we go. Let's go into the settings. Is there anything we can adjust to try and get this better? Because it really is washed out. It's not doing very well at all, is it? And um, the answer is no. You know, you've got things there that do various things, but the driver hasn't got any controls on it. So I'm not going to fiddle you know, other than hit the default. And it didn't make any difference. So let's hit OK on there. Hit OK on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually... Um, it's sort of not doing very well at all. I'm going to try and stop the tape and start it up again and see if that makes any difference. So let's see what happens here. Uh, it's Mr. Terry Wogan. And you can see it's still pretty naff. None of the buttons on here do anything, anything that's going to have any effect. So this is where I then decide to try the tape thing. And so there it is stopped. And there it is back on again. Now you can see, well, you see teletext and roll in, and it, the thing's trying to. And hey presto, it's got a proper locked colour picture. But look at the swinging from side to side. Now this is exactly what you don't want, really. Now this is down to timing errors and things uh, between the computer and the video recorder, and. It's possibly six of one and half a dozen of the other without getting out of the test equipment to find out exactly what's wrong. But it's, it's, um, it's a problem. What I've done here is I've hit the pause button and then start it up again to see if it will come back in. And now it's looking fairly reasonable. In fact, you, know, you couldn't really say there's very much wrong with that at all. If you look at the one on the left-hand side rather than the one on the right-hand side, because my hands are wobbling slightly and uh, it's not doing you know, doing that any favours. However, you can see Mr Sugar there looking quite good. And then, hang on, we've got a tracking error. No, that's, that must be another pause. Yeah, trying to get it to stop from the problems. It's not the most stable transfer you could possibly wish for. And I don't know, There is there is a way around this, which is to use a time-based corrector which I've got in a DVD recorder which is what I used when I did this for a friend. In fact the problem was that she had a NTSC tape from Japan. This is her here. Lovely lady. She's a prize-winning harmonicarist and she had this problem that she had this tape she wanted to copy. Now using just the standard device as you can see here it does not work. It is in black and white, it is locked, and it has got sound on it, but it is not a good recording, and I cannot get it to do anything other than what it's doing. The original, when I did it, I used the time-based corrector, and that worked, but using this is not working, so it's, um, it's just not good enough for that. Although it says that it should do on all specifications, I know that's given out a proper... NTSC version, well, PAL version of an NTSC signal, but um, as you can see, changing it does not help. I've just clicked on the NTSC there, and when it comes back, it's still wrong, and it's just not, it's not happy about it at all. So we give up on that one. You can really make that harmonica sing anyway. On to this one, which is a proper PAL tape, and as you can see, it's Bob the Builder. So, I'm using this as a commercial tape because I want to see if it deals with macrovision properly. And you can see here we've got the swinging again. Now, remember that the, um, the one with Amstrad on it was not a commercial tape, that was a home recorded tape, so it's nothing to do with the macrovision, this swinging from side to side business. Um, it's just the way the thing works. Or, this way the way the thing doesn't work it's rather annoying however let's see how we get on uh, we're coming into the picture here but then it will break in i mean that is not necessarily the video for this fault this is the computer losing knock which is down to the device but at least you can see it's in color uh, but we've got the same problem we had with the amstrad one it's just wobbling side to side which is not a good thing so let's see what we can do about that. Here we go, Kipper. Right, so it's hit pause and then hit play again. And it's now not made a lot of difference. And let's see what happens then. We carry on like this. 
is just it's not going to settle down it is not going to do it on its own accord so hit stop on there and hit stop on there and the tape comes out and let's try something different now this one is small soldiers now this one is interesting because this is a commercial tape from america it is the original release that was uh, well it was current when we got the machine so i ordered it from the states and it arrived and it's in good condition there is no mold or anything on it it's only been played i think twice uh, this will be the third time Mount Javis said that the machine itself hasn't been used more than the amount of times you've seen it on this on this channel. Yeah, so this has been used on the channel more than it's been done anything else. As you can see, it's a fully certified stereo surround DreamWorks and all the rest of it tape. So it's definitely got Macrovision on it. And we pop that in and we'll see what happens. And uh, right, we've got something occurring on the screen. It's working out something and hopefully it's going to start playing and here we go right. FBI warnings and things they're obviously quite slow readers in, in there so what we'll do is we'll we'll cut a little bit of this out and get on to the next scene change just a warning the sound on here is pretty good see what I mean? anyway so this is it playing back and you can see there it's got a good quality black and white picture it isn't wobbling and everything like it did before however it is only black and white so just to show you, show you there it really is a PAL version of the signal coming out it really is locked up it really is recording it but what good is it to us it's not much good at all really so that's it let me just show you this in full screen and you can see that it's got all the chroma information is there you can see the dot creep and everything on the on the high saturated colors that would be there so that's the way it is there you have it what do you reckon i have decided that i wouldn't bother buying one but then i've bought one so you know i'm, I'm stuck with that is it any good well it will do the job pal for a pal playback ntsc for an ntsc play, playback in an ntsc machine but it doesn't like playing back the NTSC on the PAL machine. And it's really um, the stability problem, I think, is down to the fact that when it's playing back a PAL tape, it's playing back the sync from the tape. And when it's playing back an NTSC tape, it's playing back the NTSC signal with freshly generated syncs on it. And so that's why it's stable, but it's in black and white. It did say in the instructions that it would do what I wanted it to do, which was play back in colour. I did get it to play back in colour using the time-based corrector, but it's um, unless you want to spend 300 quid on, a, on one of those, you've got a problem. So I wouldn't buy one. The Having to use a DVD to try or CD player to try and get the, the drivers and stuff in is, is a, a little bit awkward. It's not a particularly nice thing. For 20 quid... It's cheap, it's cheerful. You could use it to record audio, so that's fine. But it's not something that I would ever buy again or recommend buying. And the fact that I didn't buy, when I had the problem again, I wanted to do some recording, I actually went out and bought another device. So there's the answer for you. So it's not to be recommended, but it's better than nothing. I think that's probably the best thing I can say for it. And anyway, if you've got anything from this video, please like and subscribe and pass the video around you know try and get some more people interested in it and uh, if you had any any experience with with any of this then please put it down in the comments and um yeah yeah you know, it's one of those things but uh, you live and learn anyway thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again bye bye